JPG height equals 418 width equals 306 alt equals class equals put order in share copy link to paste in your message A Texas woman died after three days in a Nevada jail because she was refused medical help as she was going through heroin withdrawal Now her family is suing the Mineral County Sheriff's Office for failing to provide her with the medical attention she begged for Kelly Coltrane, 27, was in Mineral County Jail in Hawthorne when she suffered convulsions and died on July 22, 2017. Adjacent Virtus engine read invented by Teeps Coltrane was living in Texas but was arrested after she was caught speeding while visiting Rendo, Nevada for a family reunion. Because she failed to take care of previous traffic violations, she was booked into jail, where she initially refused to answer questions about her medical history and family. When she realized she couldn't make bail, she admitted she was dependent on drugs and had a history of seizures during withdrawal, according to the Reno Gazette Journal. But her family says, that the sergeant Jim Holland didn't follow a jail policy that requires inmates with history of seizures to be cleared by a doctor prior to incarceration. Jailers also failed to monitor her vitals after she told them she was going through withdrawal. Harrowing photos of her cell inside the rural prison shows coal trains conditioning worsening and displays her mopping up her own vomit in the hours before her death. Dailymail.co.uk I knew pics 2018 93 24 FABE 7800000580 image of 371536001553655 Dailymail.co.uk I knew pics 2018 93 24 FABE 8A000005780 image of 381536001558621 Dailymail.co.uk I knew pics 2018 93 24 FAB 88 E 0 0 0 0 0 5 7 8 0 image of 39 1 trillion 536 billion 1 million 566 thousand 733 JPG height equals 323 width equals 634 alt equals class equals book order in share copy link to paste in your message 4 hours after she was jailed on July 19th, she told the night deputy she needed to go to the hospital immediately for her medication. But prison policy says that jailers have to deem inmates at risk in order to receive medical attention. Unfortunately, since you're ding, referring to the detoxification process, I'm not going to take you over to the hospital right now, just to get your fix, Deputy Ray Golsinski told Coltrane, according to the investigation report. That's not the way detention works, unfortunately. You are incarcerated with us, so, you don't get to go to the hospital when you want. When we feel that your life is at risk, then you will go, he added. Then 72 hours later she began to vomit, convulse, and shake. She didn't eat, barely drank water, and remained under her bed covers.
By 5 p.m. on July 22nd, Sergeant Holland convinced her to eat a few bites and gave her new clothes to replace her sullied uniform. He brought a mop and asked her to clean up her vomit on the floor, pointing out spots she missed, then leaves with the mop. Surveillance footage shows she couldn't even stand to mop her room and cleaned from her seated position in bed. Less than an hour later Coltrane started to violently convulse until she stopped moving at 6. 26 p.m. SIX hours later at 12.30 a.m. Officer Golsinski arrives to move her to a different cell and realizes she's dead. He reported her dead, yet no one called for paramedics, despite the prison being located across the street from a hospital, just a two-minute walk away. The lawsuit says that sheriff's office had no policy on what to do upon discovering an unresponsive inmate. Coltrane's body was left locked in the cell until a forensic technician arrived at 5. 48 a.m. to investigate. The details of her shocking death was revealed in a 300-page report compiled by state investigators and released this week. Dailymail.co.uk I knew pics 2018 93 24 FABFA 1B 000 image of 41,1536,1,637,411. JPG height equals 634 width equals 634 alt equals class equals book order ink share copy link to paste in your message The Washoe County Medical Examiner said her death was accidental A toxicology report showed she had heroin in her system and died of complications of drug use Investigators found that Coltrane's jailers violated multiple policies such as denying her medical care after she told them she was drug-dependent and suffered seizures. But following the investigation, Lyon County District Attorney Stephen Rye declined to press charges in the case. The review of the case, in our opinion, did not establish any willful or malicious acts by jail staff that would justify the filing of charges under the requirements of the statute, Rye said. Based on my review, they did not notice any signs warranting any medical intervention based on their training or experience, he added. Mineral County Jail's lawyer says that Deputy Golsinski was disciplined and Sergeant Holland opted to retire early in a buyout deal with the Mineral County Commission. The district attorney's decision to not press charges spurred a new lawsuit filed on Wednesday to compensate damages and to rally for better conditions in the prison. Coltrane's mother, father and grandmother filed a wrongful death suit, accusing the sheriff's office of ignoring her life-threatening medical condition despite knowing about her seizures and withdrawal. Jail staff knew Kelly Coltrane had lain for days at the jail, in bed, buried beneath blankets, vomiting multiple times, refusing meals, trembling, shaking, and rarely moving. Defendants knew Kelly Coltrane was in medical distress, their lawyers Terry Kaiser Cooper and Carrie Doyle say in lawsuit, adding the case is the worst I have ever seen. <music> Kelly Coltrane's medical condition was treatable and her death preventable. If Ms. Coltrane had received timely and appropriate medical care, she would not have died. 
Kelly Cole Train suffered a protracted, extensive, painful, unnecessary death as a result of defendant's failures, they added. The lawsuit described her as a successful student and a friendly outgoing girl and that she developed a drug addiction and suffered depression following a knee injury as a teenager. Mineral County Sheriff Randy Adams said he's already working to improve and update the jail's policies. Obviously it's terribly unfortunate and it's tragic. That's really all I can say, he said to the Reno Gazette Journal.